Welcome back friends, it's Anders. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. I grew up in the state of Wisconsin, so I've been waiting to do this one. And I would like to say that in Wisconsin, you don't call it a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. It's just an Old Fashioned. But if you've ever had one, you know it is very different than a traditional Old Fashioned. First of all, it is brandy based. That's because Wisconsin is a huge consumer of brandy. The thing about this drink though, is you don't have to have it with brandy. If you want it with whiskey, that's fine. Because this drink is very customizable. So if you want it sweet, if you want it sour, if you want it pressed, you want it soda, I'll explain all this later. Anyway, I'm gonna show you how I drink a Wisconsin Old Fashioned and how good it is. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes. And let's have a Wisconsin Old Fashioned to the bar. Wisconsin has been drinking brandy for a long time. In 1893 at the Chicago World's Fair, a young distillery named Corbell decided to sample out their brandy. And it was a big hit because everybody at the time was drinking whiskey, but they decided to make a brandy old fashioned instead of a whiskey old fashioned. And the Wisconsinites who were primarily German immigrants were used to drinking brandy over in Europe. So they loved it and they took the cocktail home with them. Over the years, the cocktail has evolved but today Corbell still sells more brandy in the state of Wisconsin than anywhere else. Also, that same fair is when Pabst Brewing out of Milwaukee won the Blue Ribbon for their American Lager. That's how they got the name Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. It was a huge year for drinking in Wisconsin. It was a hoot. It was a good time. Great time. So we are gonna have ourselves a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. Oh, also that year, there I think there was like a crazy mass murder that happened at the World's Fair, so. Devil in the White City, good book, check it out. We are going to make this drink now. So we will build this cocktail in our lowball glass. So have a lowball glass. We don't need a shaking tin, we don't need a mixing glass. We're just gonna muddle away in this. I also have a jigger, a muddler, a bar spoon, which you don't need, but I like to give it a little mix. If you have like a straw or your finger. My grandpa used to stir his cocktails with his finger. I also have a knife an orange, and cocktail cherries. Only stir with your finger if it's your cocktail. It's a health issue. All right, the booze. We are gonna need brandy, bitters, simple syrup. This is my semi-rich simple syrup, so I did one and a half parts sugar to one part water, but if you wanna do straight simple, that's okay too. And then we're gonna also need soda water. The brandy I'm using is Corbell, and the bitters is Angostura Aromatic Bitters. This cocktail comes with a topper. It's also called a wash. You can order it sweet, sour, press, soda, or no wash. Sweet would be topping off your cocktail with 7-Up or Sprite. Sour would be topping it off with a grapefruit soda like Squirt. Press would be half 7-Up, half soda water. Soda would be soda water. And then no wash is nothing at all. All very good, depending on the level of sweetness you want. As for the brandy, I'm using a California brandy. If you want to use a cognac, you should use a cognac. It's very good. It's just different. It's still technically a brandy, but the lighter, sweeter California brandy is what I associate with the Wisconsin Old Fashioned, so that's what I'm going to use. It's also cost effective. As for the bitters, it has to be Angostura bitters for me. The taste of Angostura bitters in this cocktail is really what makes it a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. When I first started mixing this drink, I put in so much Angostura bitters, that's all you could taste. I've since let up on the amount of Angostura bitters, but still, the taste of Ango in this cocktail is what reminds me of home. But you make the cocktail you wanna make. Let's build. We're gonna start by muddling a piece of orange and cocktail cherry at the bottom of our glass. So I'm going to cut a wheel, kind of a, a thicker wheel, like that. And I'm going to cut it in half. Now cut that in half again. <laughs> Just because the size of my glass, I want the smaller wedges, like that. And we can add one cocktail cherry. I'm using Amarena cherries, which are kind of a darker Italian cherry, but you don't have to. A lot of bars in Wisconsin are gonna use the bright red maraschino cherry, and if that's what you like, that's what you should use. But try different cherries. We've got the fruit in the glass, now we can add a quarter of an ounce of the simple syrup. And four good dashes of Angostura bitters. It's quite a bit, and it's just sitting on the bottom there. 
but we are gonna muddle. And when we muddle, we want to obviously smash up the cherry, but we don't wanna muddle the rind of the orange, just because the pith is gonna make it taste bitter if we do. So just go for the fruit in the middle, and you just wanna make it like kind of a paste. A lot of recipes will use cane sugar, just because it's more abrasive and it can break up the fruit. But I like the syrup just because it incorporates into the cocktail better. That looks good, huh? It's like a fruit soup. Okay, right on top of this, I'm going to pour two ounces of brandy. Now grab some ice. I lightly crushed my ice. I like the lightly crushed ice because then I can give it a stir and all of the, the fruit and everything that's at the bottom kind of gets suspended up into the cocktail. But you can use smaller cubes or even a large cube and it's still gonna be good. Hold on. I am so sorry, I am, <laughs> I'm indecent. That's more professional. Take your ice and pour it right on top. Leave a little room just for the splash of soda, which is gonna be a very little bit. Once I've added the ice, I like to give the cocktail a little stir just to lift up the fruit into the cocktail. And this really is just a small amount. We don't wanna dilute this too much. That's it, just a splash. Now for the garnish, I'm gonna use the other half of the orange wheel that I cut and one more cherry. I don't believe this has to be a beautiful garnish. You can make it really pretty if you want. I am gonna give it a little bit more crushed ice on top though. That is it, the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. For the garnish, I did the obvious orange and cherry, but you can add whatever you want, and people do. It's really common to get this with olives, or pickled mushrooms or pickled Brussels sprouts. Uh, some people really like kind of this sweet, savory thing. Top this off with whatever you'd like. Cheers. It goes down really easy. And the crushed ice gives it kind of like a tiki feel. This is like North Woods tiki. Personally, I think it's sweet enough. But if you want to go sweet, and a lot of people do, then go with the 7-Up. That is very tasty. Yeah? As somebody who's not from Wisconsin, I think it's a fascinating yeah. drink. This drink can get a bad rap, and I believe that is because a lot of people will go to some random tavern and have it thrown together and it's just too sweet for them. But in showing you how to make this cocktail, I'm also trying to instruct you how to order it. The thing about this drink is this is meant for everybody. So everybody can have it however they want it, with whatever garnish they want, as sweet, sour, or bitter as they want. This is really where my personal philosophy on cocktail stems from. I can make a cocktail for somebody at the bar and make it as balanced and perfect as I think it can be, but their preference might be very different than mine. If you like something really bitter and somebody gives you a sweet drink, it doesn't mean that that cocktail is a terrible cocktail. So I suggest trying this cocktail. I think you should play with the ratios. It's your turn, make this cocktail your cocktail. So when somebody says, hey, do you want a Wisconsin Old Fashioned? You say, yeah, I want an Old Fashioned sweet, brandy, sour, whiskey. I want pickled Brussels sprouts on top. And everybody should have a good time. That's what drinking's all about. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified the next time a video comes out. We're gonna do this again. Cheers.